Hello, my name is Joe LaPlaca. I'm the Senior Director of the Cardi Gallery in London. Please join me on a walkthrough tour of our newest exhibition, Alberto Biazzi, Dynamica Ecologica. A leading figure of post-war Italian art, Biazzi was also a major proponent of the op and kinetic art movements that defined the visual culture of the 1960s and proposed a radically new vision for art and society. Installed over two floors of the gallery, Dynamica Ecologica is a testament to Biazzi's consilient approach, a blending of art and science that defined his practice for over 20 years. Born in 1937, Alberto Biazzi was raised in Padua, northern Italy, where he still lives and works today. His artistic career begins in Venice, when he was a student of industrial design and architecture. Ever since he was young, Biazzi immersed himself in the exciting new advancements in art and technology, in the optimistic, almost utopian vision of a future that characterized his generation. This consilient approach a unification of science and art led Biazzi to develop a radical, abstract visual language. He delved into the science of kineticism and perception. The final spark that led Biazzi to create his first artworks was his encounter with the kinetic installation by Jesus Rafael Soto at the 1958 Venice Biennale. Produced a year later in 1959, Biazzi's Trame series consists of frame-like objects with alternating grid patterns made of cotton gauze, metal wires, and perforated cardboard. He experimented with transparency and the surprising optical illusions produced by natural light mimicking natural phenomena. The year of 1959 was pivotal for Biazzi. He formed the art collective Gruppo N, along with fellow artists and designers Tony Costa, Alfredo Messeroni, Eduardo Landi, and Ennio Cigio. Opened the following year, Studio N was their official gallery and workshop in Padova, where innovative group exhibitions were held. Gruppo N operated on a communal, anonymous system of creation and attribution. They never signed their artworks individually. They pushed against the celebrated status of the individual artist. Instead, they advocated a more politically radical art based on collective participation, art as knowledge, where scientific and aesthetic research could work together in harmony. Biazzi and the other members of Grupo N investigated the psychology of perception. Their interactive installations were composed using optical illusion and perceptual phenomena like gestalt. Think of how we see only three sides of a cube, yet our mind completes the other three sides even though we can't see them. Let's make a distinction here. Kinetic art uses actual mechanical means to create motion. We think of the engines that drive the mechanical ballet of a Jean Tangley sculpture. Group ON artworks are the inverse. When you move around the artwork, it's the viewer's perception that activates the illusion of motion. Grupo N's paradigm shift was shared by other international artists. In 1961, the seminal exhibition New Tendencies at Guzagreb's Gallery for Contemporary Art brought forward a radical new vision of art and what its function in society could be, a direct challenge to the then dominant, more painterly styles of art informal and abstract expressionism. Other collectives sprang up in the early 60s across Europe and Italy, such as Gruppo T, a Milan-based group with notable artist members such as Bruno Manari, Enzo Mari, and Gianni Colombo. They, alongside Gruppo N and several others, were featured in the legendary Arte Programmata exhibition in 1963 at the Olivetti store in Milan. The exhibition would become a landmark for kinetic art and the Italian public. In the catalog essay, the legendary Umberto Eco writes, form, art, and beauty were no longer something immobile, waiting to be seen, but something in the process of becoming while we watched it. 
Grupo N were to appear in two other important exhibitions, the 1964 Venice Biennale and the Responsive Eye at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Featuring artists such as Bridget Riley, Heinz Mack, and Victor Vazzarelli, this unprecedented international survey of optical art proved to be momentous and launched the movement on a global scale. Grupo N disbanded after the 1964 Biennale, in part due to the disillusionment they felt when the American Robert Rauschenberg won the prestigious Lyon d'Or. Although Biazzi's solo career continued to follow the conceptual and aesthetic principles of Grupo N after the split, he continued to experiment with both materials and techniques uh, that are prevalent here in Dynamica Ecologica. Two of the works in the exhibition are from the Unique Telle, or Unique Canvas series. As the name suggests, Biazzi makes use of traditional canvas but in a most untraditional way. Created in 2009, Dal Giallo al Blu features Biazzi's intricate interpretation of intaglio. Here we see a complex series of incisions in a stretch canvas, upon which he methodically paints a dynamic geometric array of colored and vibrating shapes that at once appear and dissolve into the tapered edges. The act of cutting painted canvas has its roots in the 1950s, when legendary Italian artist Lucio Fontana famously slashed the surface of his paintings to reveal a physical and philosophical dimension beyond the picture plane. Fontana's gesture was hugely influential for artists of Biazzi's generation. In contrast to Fontana, however, Biazzi's cuts are neither symbolic nor gestural. They are the serial units of his dynamically interactive compositions. Constantly changing when we move around it, the fleeting image challenges the reality of two-dimensional painting, yet also retains the gestalt impression of a unified whole. The other series featured in the exhibition are the torsione, or what Biazzi calls virtual kineticism, something very unique and important to his practice. Biazzi first experimented with the torsione in the mid-1960s and has been perfecting their execution ever since. Each unique work is made up of a myriad of multicolored strips of PVC that radiate and contort from a central fixed point on a wooden support. The final effect produces shimmering patterns of contrasting colors that appear to resonate within the confines of the frame as we move around it. The title piece of the exhibition, Dynamica Ecologica, references the natural world, either through evocative titles or by favoring color relationships derived from nature. In doing so, Biazzi draws out hidden forces that permeate our universe, that animate the natural environment, whether we see them or not. In Campo de Grano of 2004, the spectrum of bright yellows and oranges recalls the sensation of being in a sunlit field with waving blades of wheat shifting in the wind. In Così o No, a brilliant turquoise halo ripples across a deep, barrel blue ground contained within a hexagon that ambiguously fluctuates between being perceived as a three-dimensional rectangular shaped volume or an irregularly shaped two-dimensional surface. The contrast of dark and light hues of blue suggests the way light reflects on water or the refractive properties of a cut sapphire. Diamond-shaped nero and quadro, or black and diamond, conveys Biazzi's fascination with the cosmos and the fourth dimension. Here, a shifting golden light appears to emerge from a surrounding dark void, hinting at a sublime cosmic manifestation. The work draws you in with hidden forces that permeate our universe revealed as tangible, observable matter. In Biazzi's abstract visual imagination, the microcosm and the macrocosm are collapsed into a single ultimate dimension, so that 
These abstract and visual phenomena could either be distant visions of the universe or the molecular workings of single organisms. Biazzi's conciliant approach to art led him to be a major proponent of the op art movement, one of the most important of the 20th century.